Hey guys, I'm Naya and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I decided to do another one on the topic of rulings. As you know, I'm very much into that and I decided to talk about Power of the Elements format rulings because it is a format we're going into and I figured it would be interesting to cover a couple bases before the format officially begins with the release of Power of the Elements. So. I dug online, like I tried to dig up as many interesting and important stuff as I could and I decided to settle on five and we're gonna cover a couple on splites and a couple on tier limit. So before we get started, the usual things, sub to the channel if you want, check out all the social media and the newly created Patreon if you want, of course. But another thing, I wanted to showcase this. Hopefully there's not too much glare. Hold on, let me pull up my camera. So I make sure there's not there's not much glare. So um okay, now you can see it. So this is Bakura and I think it looks amazing. I got it for my husband as a gift and uh I figured I would showcase it. I love it. It's a new edition. We only have like uh, wrestling Funkos and this is the first one like a Yu-Gi-Oh one and um I love it. I adore it. So yeah, with that out of the way, I'm just going to put it over here going to chill with me while, I, while we do this video, but we have a couple things to cover. So the first ruling is going to be on the card Mischief of the Yokai. And basically the question was whether or not if you're actually reducing levels of monsters, you can reduce them down to zero because the card, as you can see it on the screen, it says that each face up monster on the field loses two levels until the end phase. And uh, at first I didn't know as well, you know, because it would make sense to sort of uh, play this against Splite and make their levels zero but then again does that actually work and it doesn't so um don't use this card to counter splite because you're not gonna achieve anything uh, monsters levels cannot go down to zero if the only monsters on the field would be the level two monster that you're trying to reduce however if you have different levels of monsters on the field and you can legally reduce at least one of them so let's say there's a level three monster on the field and then you have like one or two or, or however many level two or level one monsters then the levels are going to go down to level one so this is like uh, a rule and the levels cannot go down to zero so this is something to keep in mind and this would not be a good choice to side against plate and i also mentioned that you need to be legally able to activate the card meaning that there there needs to be a monster on the field that you're trying to reduce above level two so if there are only level two monsters or level one monsters which cannot be like legally reduced by two uh, you cannot activate it so the activation would be illegal so if there is a level three monster like i said the levels would go down to one when it comes to the level two and the level one monsters and the level three which is irregularly reduced but make sure that if you're trying to use the card which is not very um advisable uh, don't illegally activate it then the next ruling is going to be um it's a very simple one essentially just uh, what happens when gigantic splite whose original attack is doubled is boosted by cat shark and i already gave it away a bit gigantic splite says that its original attack is doubled if it has an xd's link uh, synchro or fusion monster and or as material and the wording is that the original attack is doubled and when you look at cat shark which is a very useful monster in the splite extra deck it says that during other player's turn you can detach an xd's material and target the xd's monster you're controlling and the attack and defense become double its original attack and does that stack on top of each other like both original attacks and it does simply because a gigantic splite doesn't say that it gains any kind of attack but still has like an original attack printed on the card it says that the original attack is now doubled and since this is viewed as the original attack when it's doubled by cat shark it's actually going to go up to a bigger value so gigantic splite originally is at 1600 but then the original attack becomes 32 and with 32 like going double with cat sharks effect it is going to go up to 6400 so it is going to have big stats and you need to think about that it does look at its original attack and per its effect 
That's what it becomes. So it becomes double originally and then double again. Now the next one is going to be slight carrot versus continuous effects. Now this is very much similar to King Theory and King Regulus, which I covered in the previous rulings video, but slight carrot does negate the effect, not the activation. So if we look at the actual card, you have it up on the screen and you're able to read it, but basically it's going to negate the effect of a spell, trap card, or effect. By attributing the level rank or link to monster, you're able to do that. And if if you attribute a rank or link to, you're also able to destroy. Now this comes into play uh, and not similarly to Kthiri and King Regulus. There is of course a difference because Kthiri and King Regulus does not destroy at all. So here with Spite Carrot we're going to be looking at two different things. Since it is negating only the effect and it's going up against a continuous, uh, let's say trap card, let's say something like Gozen, Rivalry, whatever it may be. If you're trying to negate the effect of a continuous trap card on activation it's not actually doing anything it's just a continuous effect so if we look at a continuous trap card what a card negating the effect is attempting to do is negate the actual effect happening when the card is activated and then when it's resolving but this one doesn't really do anything since it is continuous. So when you're attempting to negate it, you're not going to negate anything. So by using carrot, you would essentially just be doing nothing because after carrot's effect, it would just go back to whatever it was. Like it's still applying, it's still affecting the field and it's not achieving anything. So um, when you look at the other part of the effect where it actually destroys, now that comes into play because if your opponent is actually activating something you're chaining carrot yes you're negating the effect but you're also destroying the card and if you look at continuous cards they need to be face up on the field to be able to actually apply the effect fully so when they're not they're not going to do anything but that only comes into play if you're actually attributing a rank or link to monster and then we have two tier limit rulings so the first one we're going to be covering is just going to be the difference between when a tier limit card is actually sent to the graveyard by card effect or not by card effect, because they do trigger, similarly to Shadal Monsters, if they're sent to the graveyard by card effect. But when you look at cards that sent to the graveyard in some way, shape, or form, it's not always by card effect. And it's important to differentiate between that, because you're gonna find yourself in a situation where your opponent uses Nibiru, or a kaiju or ip or stuff like that and it's not all similar so when you look at an effect of ip let's say or uh, unchained soul of disaster you have different examples but let's say ip ip's effect link summons the effect is just perform a link summon but when you're actually performing the link summon and you're using whichever monster that monster is not considered to be sent away as part of card effect but simply for the mechanic of the link summon so let's say you're using ip to go into the underworld goddess which would be able to use your opponent's monsters. The opponent's monsters, and let's say their tier limit monsters, would not be sent away by card effect, but simply by the summoning procedure to link summon the underworld goddess. So it's not by card effect. And then if we look at a card like Kaiju, Kaiju's effect is that it can be special summoned by attributing the opponent's monster, but the monster is not attributed by card effect, but it's simply a summoning procedure of the aforementioned Kaiju. And then the last card we're gonna touch upon is Nibiru. But Nibiru, if you look at the card effect, it does tribute by the card effect. Like it needs to tribute, then summon itself, summon the token, like do all of that. Uh, so if you read through the card, more than likely you're gonna be able to tell the difference. But here are a couple of examples, so you're sort of... Um, when you find yourself in these situations, you're gonna know better. But I would like to encourage you to ask your head judge if you're not certain, maybe before the event, like which cards are going to affect the cards, the tier element cards, which are not going to, so they are able to explain to you. But if you're actually in a game, now this is something I want to stress, there is no coaching, like not by your friends, not by the judge, not by anyone. So um, when you're actually doing any kind of play, you need to actually commit to a play and then if you're not certain about something, you call the judge over and they're trying to resolve everything as much as possible without actually coaching you. So it's important to familiarize yourself with these situations and interactions beforehand. So if you're actually doing something, 
you make sure it's not illegal, like any kind of you triggering tier limits when you shouldn't like don't do that because it is illegal so know when you can actually do those things if you're planning to pick up the deck all right and then the last one is a tiny bit more complicated but it's basically the translation of the tier limit field spell now when it comes to these cards it is a bit weird when it miss not mistranslation i guess but just a different translation happens it's always weird so i don't know me personally i'm just like you know wh why does it happen why don't they just make sure everything is on point but you know we need to deal with that and right now looking at the field spell essentially the only important part of it is the fact that if a tier limit monster is returned this is the previous wording from the field and or graveyard to the deck and or extra deck you're able to destroy a card on the field. But right now, with the translation here to the TCG, it says if the tier limit monster is shuffled to the deck. But when you look at tier limit monster's effects, they actually place themselves on the bottom of the deck. And then you have a couple words, you know, I just mentioned return, shuffle, place. And then the confusion happened, whether or not they're actually going to be able to destroy a card since you didn't physically shuffle that tier limit monster into the deck. But thankfully, how I'm pretty sure it's going to be ruled due to the precedent we have. And this is what I'm what I want to mention before that. Again, I encourage you to ask your head judge. Uh, not me, not anyone, not any kind of group on Facebook, even though we all uh, appreciate the judges lounge. Nothing like that is going to be able to tell you everything because your head judge is going to rule however they think it's appropriate. So ask them first. So the precedent is the Strudo versus Nightmare Unicorn. And the Strudo should put itself to the bottom of the deck if it was summoned due to the effect, you pay half, you place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. But then you have Nightmare Unicorn, which if co-linked is going to be able to draw a card after shuffling the card it targets into the deck. And then again, the question poses itself whether or not if the, the Strudo is placed on the bottom of the deck and not shuffled if Unicorn will be able to draw. And the answer that was given and how it was ruled is yes, Unicorn will be able to draw because essentially those um, words should be interchangeable. So placed on the bottom, returned, shuffled, all of that should be interchangeable among them. So you're able to draw and consequently you're also able to destroy with the field spell because even though you don't physically shuffle the tier limit monster in the deck, you only place it, you're still returning it over there. So the condition when it comes to the field spell is actually met. So yeah, that's going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I brought you some, some knowledge, something informative. I always love bringing them to you because I'm researching them regardless. So to me, it just makes sense if I have everything compiled anyway to bring stuff to you so you have a bit more knowledge. If you knew about those, you know, it's also really cool. So um, yeah, of course, if you like the video, like it. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything specific you will want me to make a video about when it comes to rulings. And um, yeah, you know, sub to the channel, check out all the social media, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!